I'm going to address something now that gets me really, really, really riled up and annoyed. And it's simply dots per inch and pixels per inch. This perennial question of image resolution and how it's come about that today virtually everybody who has anything to do with photography tends to use PPI and DPI at will and they get the two terms mixed up and they'll supplant one term with the other and in reality that is so wrong it's unbelievable because basically dots per inch and pixels per inch have got absolutely nothing to do with each other at all dots per inch is to do with printing because printers print in dots believe it or not and ppi is pixels per inch which has got everything to do with pixels and you don't print pixels but your monitor displays in pixels and your sensor records in photosites which we can deem as pixels now i'm not going to go into where this arbitrary 300 pixels per inch or 300 dpi as so many people wrongly call it where that comes from it's it's irrelevant i could tell you but it's quite a long story and it's absolutely stupid but what i will do is i'll put a link to another video in the description down below which i do strongly recommend you go and watch it's by the great guy gowan who's been in this game even longer than i have and he will in that video explain to you just where 300 dpi comes from and how much of a myth and a misconception it truly is and what i'm going to do initially is show you the proof of the misconception when it comes to digital images so we've got this image here it's uncropped it's processed up to a, up to a point and i'm going to go and make three jpegs from this image and i'm going to go to file and i'm going to go to export and i'm going to just export it over to my desktop and i'm going to make it a jpeg 1200 pixels on the long edge and i am going to give it a resolution of yep you guessed it 300 pixels per inch and we'll go export and there it is so the next thing i'm going to do is go file export and i'm going to send it as a jpeg at 1200 pixels but at this instance i'm going to export it at 30 pixels per inch and we'll go export we won't overwrite we'll click use unique names and now we've exported a second jpeg we're now going to go and really rock your boat now and we'll go export and we will come down here and we will change the resolution to one pixel per inch still 1200 pixels on the long edge and we'll go export again use unique names and you can try this with any image you like and the results will always be the same so our edit 3 jpeg is at one pixel per inch our edit 2 jpeg is at 30 pixels per inch and our edit jpeg is at 300 pixels per inch so what we'll do is we'll select all three we will right click and we'll go to open with and we'll choose firefox and this is guy's little video here which i do strongly recommend you go and watch and as i said i'll put a link to it in the uh, description down below so here we have our three images so this one is edit three and this is at one pixel per inch and it's at full size on the screen here's our image at 30 pixels per inch and here's our image at 300 pixels per inch and they don't look any different at all so for a digital image displayed on a screen the way that image displays pixels per inch has got nothing 
to do with it it's all to do with pixel dimensions and the pixel dimensions of all three images on the long edge is 1200 pixels so from an electronic image or a digital display image point of view dots per inch has got nothing to do with anything it is irrelevant however if I pull up my finder again and I go to open with and I open all three images inside of Photoshop and uh, yeah they all got sRGB attached to them so we'll go use the embedded profile for each one we're on the edit.jpg this is the one at 300 pixels per inch and if we look down here we can see that it says 300 pixels per inch and if we look at the physical size of the image that we could measure with a tape measure we can see it is 67.82 millimeters by 101.6 millimeters if we go to the one at 30 pixels per inch you can see it's 30 pixels per inch but it is now 678 millimeters in other words 67 centimeters by 1116 millimeters so it's over a meter tall yes now then you've got a little bit of a thing to watch out for here if we go to the image that is at one pixel per inch <laughs> yeah this is 20 meters by 30 and a half meters so there is a little school of thought a stupid school of thought that when you want to send a picture up to a website everybody's got this fear that oh somebody can right click save image as and they can make a print out of it well if we stick with an output resolution for that jpeg of 300 pixels per inch then that print will be six centimeters by what ten centimeters off this image so you will get a much smaller print from this image than you would from say this image which is at 30 pixels per inch if you want to protect your images from having saleable prints or um, people nicking them and putting them on t-shirts keep the output pixels per inch at 300 but bear in mind go and watch guys video and see what a stupid stupid way the industry actually took up 300 pixels per inch as an industry standard it, it's pathetic it really is but anyway what I want to talk to you about as well is printing because people get pixels per inch and dots per inch mixed up so what we'll do is we'll now go and look at printing and DPI so here we are back with our original image inside the library module of Lightroom and I'm going to go over to the print module now it doesn't really matter whether you print out of Lightroom or Photoshop or neither Lightroom nor Photoshop can talk directly to the printer why is that Andy of course they do because the printers plugged straight into the back of the computer yes it is but that's got about as much relevance as me and a Frenchman being on the same coach I can't speak to the Frenchman because he can't speak English and because I can't speak French Photoshop and Lightroom your digital display your monitor in other words and your computer all work in additive RGB your printer on the other hand doesn't speak additive RGB it speaks subtractive CMYK that's why you've got cyan magenta and yellow inks in your printer so the two devices speak different languages they have to have an interpreter and that interpreter is known as the printer driver and your printer driver is a critical piece in your color management workflow not only does it actually convert your additive RGB image to a subtractive CMYK image so it can print onto printer paper 
it also is capable of manipulating the resolution of your image in terms of dots per inch. Now, as I said, it's very clever, but it's clever only to a degree. Now, if we look over here in the print job panel in the Lightroom printer module, we can see that I've actually got a print resolution setting of 360 pixels per inch, which should actually be dots per inch. But uh, there you go. Now, when you bring an image of your own into the print module, it will most likely say 300 because it's taking its initial dots per inch, not pixels per inch, output resolution from the set pixels per inch resolution that's embedded in the image, namely this crackpot 300 pixels per inch. If we want to see the reality of what's going on, if I uncheck print resolution, now we can see that this image, Lightroom actually wants to send the image at 669 dots per inch, not pixels per inch. Now I've actually got this image set up to print full height on A4 paper. And we've got this margin at the bottom and we've got margins up the sides and a very slim one at the top. They are actually fixed margins on my printer that you cannot print into. Uh, not without a, a lot of difficulty in jigging me pokery in the setup um, to enable me to do borderless printing, which I don't really want to do ever because all it does is make a mess of your printer with overspray, but that's neither here nor there. We are set up for A4 paper. This image is not native A4. This image is slightly larger native than A2 at 300 dots per inch. Now, if I take my page setup for the Epson 3800, which is an epic printer, I absolutely love it and I don't see any reason to upgrade it because it produces absolutely stunning images, but that's another thing entirely, again. You can see I've got the paper size set to A4. Now if I come and set the paper size to A3 and then click OK, now you can see the image has got smaller, basically because I've got a fixed cell size. If I actually take the cell size up to enable me to now print the image full height on A3 paper, now you can see the dots per inch resolution has actually decreased. It's now 465. And if I go back to page setup and I switch out to A2 paper and click OK and then lift up the cell size again so the image is going to print out full height on A2, you can see it's now wanting to print out at 324 dots per inch, not pixels per inch. Now, also notice that the image is 15.143 by 22.69 inches. Now, if I go back over to the print resolution and check it, now you'll see the resolutions disappeared from there. And I've now got my default 300 back. But you'll notice that the image hasn't changed in its physical size. Now, this print resolution figure here it's a bit of a strange one because 300 is great for Canon printers but if you're on an Epson printer for the most part Epson printers have a greater nozzle density on their print heads than Canons do and the actual resolution of the print head on an Epson printer is actually 300 and 60 nozzles. So what we do is we change the print resolution output to a custom setting of 360 dots per inch, not pixels per inch. But if you'll notice, the image's physical size has not changed. 
Is this sounding rather familiar to you? Because we made three images at different pixel per inch resolutions earlier on in this video. And their physical sizes when displayed on a screen were always the same. They never changed. It's the same thing here. So why have I actually changed this to 360? I've actually changed it simply because if I don't make the actual output resolution from Lightroom to the input side of the printer driver if I don't make that a whole fraction of the actual intended print resolution I'm going to run the risk of generating print artifacts which can be dithering in tight areas say in these darker shadow regions I can generate false colours, I can do all sorts of nasty little things that really appear only in very small areas but when we're talking about doing an A2 print or even God forbid an AO print then those small errors will be quite large and visible at anything shorter than the standard sort of print viewing distance. So if I switch over to my print settings and I actually go to the print settings menu you can see here that on this printer I have this super photo resolution of 2880 dots per inch thank God somebody is actually using the right terminology now we've got all these other options here which we don't want any of we don't want high speed because that's bi-directional printing and we don't need finest detail because all that's going to do is waste ink but we are going to get the printer to actually print this image at 2880 dots per inch. So we'll go ahead and click save on that. And we come back over here. And we're actually outputting to the printer driver at 360 dots per inch. Now if I go and pull my calculator up. And there we go and I go and click cancel now we're going to print at 2880 dots per inch and we're outputting to the printer driver at 360 dots per inch so there is a multiplier factor of 8 so basically the printer driver is going to take this 360 dot per inch input and output it on the print head at 2880 dots per inch and the image will still print at 15.143 by 22.69 inches and it will have no print artifacts in it. Seen as I'm using an Epson printer if I don't change this value to 360 if I actually leave it at the default 300 if I then pull up my calculator again and we cancel all that lot and we go 2880 divide by 300 now I'm going to get 9.6 9.6 is going to cause a problem because the printer driver just wants to take an input resolution and then double it and double it and double it that's that's basically the the highest elevation of mathematics that the printer driver is capable of when it comes to dot per inch resolution interpolation or if you like up sampling and don't get your panties in a bunch when i say up sampling because it doesn't up sample the image all it does is up sample the dots per inch value and that actually results in the dots becoming much much smaller which just adds to the detail in the image it doesn't affect the image overall apart from the density of dots that are in there and that actually gives us a much finer result in the printed image than the result that we can see actually on our monitor i mean i'm actually i actually do all my workflow on a 27 inch iso color edge which is an industry spec monitor and 
yeah, it's an exceptionally good monitor, but it's only got a resolution of, of, of I think, what is it, about 107, something like that, I'm not too sure, but about 107 pixels per inch. So basically, my images look a lot coarser on my monitor than they do in reality, and certainly a lot coarser than they do in print. And this is the reason why I always tell people not to worry too much uh, about noise in an image, because noise doesn't print. When we view it on our monitor, we actually view it at quite a coarse resolution. But when we print it, say we're using a modern up-to-date Epson printer, which can actually be printed not at 2880 dots per inch, but as high as 5760 dots per inch, well, you, the noise is just going to be invisible. So our printer driver, if it's left with this 9.6 multiplier for the dot resolution of the final output print, it can't divide this 9.6 into the intended output of the printer, these are the 2880 dots per inch, without some bits left over. And it's those bits left over, those remainders from your long division, that actually go to cause printing artifacts. So there you go. Uh, we'll go and shut that down now. And one final tip. So if I was, see, if I was printing this onto a Canon printer, a Canon printer's print head resolution works in units of 300. So I could print this at 300, I could print it at 600, I could print it at 1200, and we'd all be fine. But because I'm printing to an Epson printer, I need to send this at a base of 360 dots per inch to the input side of the printer driver. Now, I can actually save the printer driver some calculation by actually telling it to send at 720. Now, I'll get this exclamation mark inside the Lightroom print dialog, and if I click it, it says you've chosen a high resolution for printing, which could cause memory issues or a failure to print on some systems. Yeah, so don't try this on a 10-year-old Windows laptop that's only got about 2 gig of RAM in it. That's basically what it's telling you. So now what I'll do is I'll change that back to 360 for a moment. And I'll uncheck it. And we can see we're back to this 324. Now if we send that 324 dots per inch to the printer driver, we've already seen that we're going to generate print artifacts. Or we're at least going to run the risk of generating them. But if I wanted to do a small image... So we'll change this back to A4, and we'll click OK. And then you can see that we're now printing full size A4, well, full height A4, and the intended output is 669 pixels per inch. Well, I'm not going to send that at 360, because that will be down sampling. So what I'd do is I'd up sample by the next integer or next multiple which would be 720 and we'd input that and of course we get this little warning dialog box again but we just ignore it anyway so there you go i hope that's sort of cleared up any misunderstandings you might have about dots per inch and pixels per inch and really and truly it does make my blood boil and uh, that's why I don't want to go into it any more than I have done. Otherwise, I shall start to swear, and I don't want to do that. But um, I get absolutely appalled by the amount of... I'm going to use a swear word. The amount of crap that I see on the internet, which actually perpetuates the sheer stupidity and misunderstanding about dots per inch and pixels per inch. Now... I do this full time, seven days a week. And so, in a nutshell, I've got time to work all this stuff out. I mean, it, this this is actually stuff I've known for years, but any time I get a problem, I've got plenty of time to work it out. What annoys me so much is that this misinformation about dots per inch and pixels per, pixels per inch 
is so prevalent on the internet and it is gobbled up by dare I say the amateur and the hobbyist photographer you guys most likely and the one thing I always say about hobby photographers they've all got a full-time job They've, they haven't got seven days a week to dedicate to their photography like I have. They might have, if they're lucky, one day, or perhaps if they've got a very understanding wife, they might have two days every seven to actually dedicate to their chosen hobby. And really and truly, they are the guys who can least afford to be led down the garden path by the disinformation and junk that is pre so prevalent on the internet so there you go i've had my little rant i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you've found it useful i know it's gone on for a little bit and yeah like i say hope you found it useful if you have give me a like click the subscribe button and please 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 feel free to share this video around wherever you like okay so until the next time to root.